Welcome to Rescue International's Starlink Response Series. Today we're going to look at how we can use the new Starlink Generation 3 satellite internet system on our command truck. Will it work laying flat on the roof? Will it work when the truck is in motion and what kind of speeds will we get? We're using the roof rack brackets for our current Starlink in motion system to strap the new Generation 3 system antenna to lay flat. This is just to test the concept we're not worried so much about emotion use. As just supporting a command post operation in a remote area where cellular coverage is not good or totally not covered. This will save a lot of time when getting on scene, as we will not have to set up our Generation 2 system on arrival. We will be coming into the site already online and just have to park in an area that will see the northern sky. So let's see where the CAT8 cable takes us and how we're setting up the router and power source to test the concept. We will look at more permanent mounting methods in a later video. The antenna is connected to the Generation 3 router. For this test, we have it sitting on top of our ICM crossband link radio system and our VHF mobile repeater. This will give you Wi-Fi coverage around the truck for laptops and phones to connect, allowing for phone calls on Wi-Fi calling. It will also allow our mapping systems to track units in the search or disaster area if they have mobile data for live tracking or delayed downloads when the phone moves in and out of coverage. We're using a CAT8 flat cable to connect the antenna to the router. This works very well, as the flat cable will go in and out of the truck door and back compartment door, with a good seal for this test. The plug to the antenna has a small amount of putty sealer to help keep it dry. The cable may need the plugs, trimmed to allow it to fit in the units. This setup also allows the system to be removed quickly and set up on side away form the truck. A CAT Ethernet cable can be run from the router RJ45 connector to the command post trailer or other Wi-Fi access points for better coverage as needed. Remember this is a test of concept setup and not a final solution. We're going to power the system from its 120 volt power supply for now and we'll later use a 12 volt DC to 48 volt DC converter in a later install. We plug the power supply into a 12 volt to 120 volt inverter that is connected to a 100 amp hour battery. It is charged by the truck's 12 volt system when running, or we can plug the truck into a 120 volt source like a generator when needed. The batter can run the Starlink for a few hours. Here is a view from the other side of the roof. The standard Gen 3 antenna is laying flat between the two roof rack bars that are used to support the quick disconnect plate for the larger and way more expensive and motion system that works very well. But is much larger unit and is harder to move and the upfront cost is too high for many users and volunteer teams to afford. Let's look at the system setup and speed. We will assume that you have used the system in fixed locations and know how it works at this point. The Starlink app will show that the antenna is not in the correct tilt position that it expects. Do not worry her and move back to main screen. We will not do any alignment with this configuration. We have an example of the obstruction screen after sitting overnight. You will see some blockage from trees across from the driveway. It is good coverage with speeds in the 100 plus range. Remember that this unit is on a mobile plan. The next day we had some snow and the unit was getting 20 to 50 megs down with the snow. We turned on the heater and it melted it in about 40 minutes. Let's take it on the road and see if it works when moving. We tested it at speeds up to 55 miles per hour. Remember that this system is not FCC or Starlink approved for this design and subject to being block when in motion. And this is what we got. In this screenshot of many we took, we were getting 83 down by 12 up. Not bad for 55 miles an hour. We tested by driving over 10 miles out on various roads and different speeds. The speeds ranged between 20 to 100 down. Most were in the 40 range, and we never got shut off or an email about emotion being detected. But we all can expect that may happen at any time. And for our public safety use, we are really concerned about having it at an emergency or training site for our communications. Having in motion in a response area like we had for Katrina, Sandy, or Ian in 2022 would have been a big plus. Watch for part two on special mounts for rooftop, flagpole, new pole mount, and rooftop. Coming soon, please subscribe so you do not miss out and help us reach our subscriber goal at YouTube. Please stay safe and press on as we do so that others might live.